What we're going to be going over here is fixed overhead variance analysis, and we're going to be looking at it in terms of a graph here, how we graph those variance and that variances out here. So when we're talking about variance analysis, really what we're looking at is comparing our actual results that we have for the period versus some budgeted performance that we've established for the period. All right, so for our variance analysis, we have to do really be dealing with three different amounts here, and I got them laid out in table form. We'd have our actual amount, actual results for the period, then we'd have to determine a flexible budgeted amount based, and then we'd have some static amount or would start some established standard amount here. So first thing we have to do at the beginning of the period, we have to set up our static budget or our standard amount and be coming off like our master budget. And that's where we'd be taking some budgeted quantity times some budgeted price. So in this case, the budgeted quantity would be uh, fixed overhead, and it's going to be based on direct labor hours, this fixed overhead. So we can have some uh, budgeted quantity here of some uh, fixed overhead direct labor hours, some, some budgeted price on a per hour basis for our fixed overhead, that is. Okay, so we've established our static budget at the beginning of your period, then at the Moving over here to the end of the period, this is where we're going to know our actual results. This is where we're going to take the actual quantity that we've used here times the actual price. Okay, so now we know our actual results. We know our static or our standard amount here. Now we can determine our flexible amount. And that's really taking our actual quantity here from our actual results for the period times the budgeted price. And the budgeted price is coming off our static budget. So actual quantity times our budgeted price is our flexible budgeted amount. Okay, so now we can do our variance analysis between our actual, our flexible, and our static amounts. Okay, so for fixed overhead, for our actual amount, we're going to just take the actual hours used here times some actual fixed overhead rate. And then the flexible amount, it's a little different here, it's going to be some denominator hours times the budgeted fixed overhead rate. The budgeted fixed overhead rate here is coming from our static budget. But the, these denominator hours here, they're coming, uh, that's going to really be based on the total budgeted direct labor hours for the period. So that's our, we're going to be using those total direct labor hours that were budgeted for the period. That would be our flexible amount here denominator hours, total direct labor hours, times some budgeted fixed overhead rate here. And then for the static amount, that's just taking our budgeted hours allowed or allocated for the period here, times some budgeted fixed rate here. Okay, so for our spending variance, that's just the difference between our actual and flexible amounts. And in this case, we can't factor anything out here, but we would you just take the actual amount here, actual hours used times the actual fixed overhead rate, and then the subtract from it our flexible amount of budgeted fixed overhead rate times those denominator hours. Just remember there's our total budgeted direct labor hours for the period. Okay, that's for our spending variance. Our volume variance is based on our flexible versus our static amounts. And what we can, what's common that we can factor out are there between our flexible and static amounts is that budgeted fixed overhead rate. And then that's just the variance is only the difference between those denominator hours versus the budgeted hours allowed or allocated. That difference times the budgeted fixed overhead rate. Okay, so that's for our volume variance. Okay, so now let's go down to our graph and look at how we have that laid out. Okay, looking at those, that fixed overhead, our fixed overhead variances on our graph. So we start with our graph here along our x-axis or our bottom axis, that's our direct labor hours. We're gonna have that here. And then along our y-axis, that's going to be our fixed overhead costs, what it costs us. And then we have two different amounts that we're going to have to look at. We got this uh, green line here, that's that increasing green line here. And that's going to be our based on the budgeted fixed overhead rate times those direct labor hours that we have here. So that's our variable amount really. And then the other amount is our fixed overhead rate itself is going to be its this blue line that's just constant all the way across here. So we've got those two different over our two you've got the constant fixed overhead rate here and that's really that flexible budgeted amount that we looked at that was that budgeted fixed rate times those denominator hours. Okay. So those are the two lines that we have to deal with. Now let's look at how we got our variances here. So first off uh, beginning with our budgeted hours allocated or allowed. Okay, we would move that up to our green line here, our variable line, and then we move it across here to our y-axis. That's really the budgeted fixed uh, uh, cost on, uh, per hour here 
times the budgeted hours allowed. Okay, so that's our first point here. Then we have our actual hours used here. Those are the actual hours that we used. Okay, that's coming off our, and let's go back here just to understand this big, this big budgeted fixed where this is coming from, budgeted hours. If we go back up to our graph, we can see it. That's our static amount up here. I meant to say it. That's our static amount. We dealt with our static amount for our budgeted hours allowed plus our cost here, the budgeted fixed rate times the budgeted hours allowed. Okay, that related to our graph. Now our next one was our actual hours used here and really have two different points that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at where it intersects the fixed rate here and or the constant rate here and also up here. Now we got a point here above both lines here and that's because our actual fixed cost uh, per unit basis here is different than what we have budgeted here both our constant amount here and our variable amount or our, our, con uh, our line here that that line here so those two amounts it's actually the actual fixed rate here is different from the budgeted fixed rate essentially that's what we're talking about okay so we're going to really have two different points to deal with there moving over to our fixed amount here it's going to be that budgeted fixed amount here times the denominator hours and that was our flexible amount up here and then the other one was our uh, the actual hours used here at that actual fixed uh, fixed cost here on a per unit basis that was the actual fixed rate times the actual hours used that was our actual amount up here okay so we pretty much laid that out here one other thing is we'll go to the let's look at these denominator hours those are the total direct labor hours that we have for the period we'd have that on our graph here and then we'd or on our our direct labor hours and then we would move up here and this is where both our uh, flexible our flexible budgeted our constant amount here and our very our variable amount here or that budgeted fixed rate times those direct labor hours that's where they intersect here just to make that point to the de denominator hours and our, our budget are the flexible that's where these two lines meet that's the only point okay so we really got uh, two points that we're gonna we're gonna really have these three points that we're gonna have to deal with so for our fixed overhead spending that's really the difference here between our act actual the actual amount actual fixed rate here times the actual hours used that we had up here versus our budgeted fixed rate here times the denominator hours, which was the flexible amount. So we're fle fixed overhead spending varia variable was between these our actual our actual results for the period here and what we have for our flexible budgeted amount that we went up and looked at. So that's our fixed overhead spending uh, variance, and then our fixed overhead volume variance that, that we're looking at. Again, we're looking at these points here where we're looking at the budgeted hours allowed here where it intersects here. That's our budgeted fixed overhead, uh, fixed rate here times the budgeted hours allowed versus our, our constant amount here. So again, this is where we're looking at uh, the constant amount here is coming off our flexible budget that we have, the denominator hours times the budgeted fixed hours, and this other amount here of the budgeted hours allocated here is coming off the static amount up here. So that's our fixed overhead volume variance, the difference between a flexible amount here and our static amount here. And then our total variance, that's simply the actual fixed rate here times the actual hours used versus the budgeted fixed rate here times the budget buttered, budgeted hours allowed, that difference. And you can see that up over here in our chart. Actual versus the static amount here. Okay, so there's just a couple other variances that we want to look at here, but just to understand here, uh, we, we, have, we have to look at our budgeted hours allocated or allowed for the period, actual hours used here, and also those denominator hours, and then where those our actual fi total fixed rate that we have, because we have some fixed overhead rate here, intersected with that our budgeted rate fixed rate here times those denominator as we dealt with those and we also had to deal with our actual cost here versus what we had for those different budgeted rates here times the denominator hours and budgeted rates times the 
uh, budgeted hours allowed here. Okay, just so you understand that. Okay, then one couple other things we have to go over here. All right, let's go back to this graph. Same graph as we had before, but only go by definition here. There's a couple things that we want to look at. We have two other uh, variances that we have to look at, and I didn't go through it in, in a chart form or anything like that, but it's only to note here. When we're looking at our total fix our budgeted fixed rate here, that total constant fixed rate, and then we're comparing it to the budgeted fixed rate times the actual hours used here. I, I got actual quantity here, but those are the actual hours used here. That difference here between the blue line here and those budgeted fixed times the actual hours used would be called our idle capacity variance. And then we got two other things. We got our planned production volume variance. And that's the difference between those, that blue line here and our green line here at any point. The green line was that budgeted fixed rate times the direct labor hours. The blue line here was just the total denominator hours times the budgeted fixed rate, just constant across. So the difference at any point, any point in here, is called our planned production volume variance. And you can see there's an inflection point here where green line here has a greater, greater cost here than the blue line. And the, again, there, that's that produ planned production volume variance in here, only by definition. So this is favorable. When the green line is, point on the green line is above the blue line, any points in here, that's favorable. Any points here where your green line here is less than the blue line, any points where the, you'd be falling in, these, in this region here would be unfavorable. Okay, so we've, we, we add, added this idle capacity variance in here, that little region in here. And then we also looked at our planned production volume variance on both sides of that inflection line here. Any, any amounts in this area. And then one last thing here, just to go through our key here. So as a reference key, that this red here, this BF, that was our budgeted fixed overhead rate here. AHU in green was the actual hours used. And those would be based on, in this case, the direct labor hours we're figuring on our, for our fixed overhead rate. BHA was the budgeted hours allowed here. Those are the budgeted uh, hours that we have allowed. And then that DH was our total budgeted direct labor hours for the period. And they refer to that as the denominator hours because it's in the denominator here when we figure out our rates. And this budgeted fixed rate here, that's just taking your total fixed cost for the period here and divide them by your total direct labor hours here. And I didn't point out here, it should have been on the graph, you should have had an AF here too, and that would be the actual fixed overhead rate. Should have been on here. And then you would have taken the total actual fixed overhead costs divided by the total direct labor hours here for the period. Okay, so that'll take care of our fixed overhead variance analysis here when we looked at it in terms of a graph. All right, one last thing here that I failed to mention, and let's go back and look at it. When we're talking about that planned production volume variance, where it was the difference between what we have here on our green line here, where that was the budgeted fixed rate times those direct labor hours versus our constant rate here, which was the budgeted fixed and the denominator hours, the difference here, that was that planned production variance. The equation here, or the value here, would be those denominator difference between the denominator hours and your budgeted hours allocated or allowed here for the period. So different that difference, denominator hours uh, versus your budgeted hours are allowed. That difference times the budgeted fixed rate here. So that's that value here. That was that planned production volume variance. And you look at it on both sides of your inflection point here. On the side here where you've got the green line above the blue line, any difference here would be a favorable variance. And on the other side here where you've got the blue line is above the green line, that would be an unfavorable variance. Okay, so planned production volume variance is the difference between your denominator hours and your uh, budgeted hours allowed or allocated here times the budgeted fixed rate.